All right, welcome back to first chapter. Let's find Joshua. Strange. I could have sworn, but it couldn't be. Joshua! Hey, you two. You need to stop making us worry about you. I almost had a heart attack when I heard you went chasing after some guy with silver hair. Um, how did you know? Polly told us. I guess she saw you. Uh, she's a pretty sharp kid. I did follow a man matching that description out this way. But I guess I lost him. Oh my. He must have been pretty talented if he managed to give you the slip. Any idea who he was? I'm afraid not. I don't think it was our arsonist, though. I tilled him as long as I could. I see. By the way, why'd you run off by yourself? My thoughts exactly. You could have at least left us a message. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to worry you. Who said I was worried? I was just pointing out the importance of teamwork. <laughs> You're a terrible liar. Not five minutes ago, you were in a total panic. I... I was not. And hey, you were pretty concerned yourself. I... um... <laughs> Thank you, both of you. Your attention, please. All play personnel, please report to the auditorium right away. Once again. All play personnel... Please report to the auditorium right away. Thank you. Oh yeah, it's almost time, isn't it? Yes, we should get into costume. The play will start soon. All right then, let's do this. Oh, what about that guy with the silver hair? Hmm. I suppose that all we can do is let Karna know and warn her to keep an eye out. The three then spoke to Karna about the silver haired man and left for the auditorium immediately afterward. 30 minutes later. Wow, look at all the people! Okay, now I'm getting kind of nervous. You'll be fine, Estelle. This is what all the rehearsals were for. Besides, once we start up, you'll forget they're even here. You're the type who can only focus on one thing at a time anyway. Just one thing at a time, huh? Well, I guess I'll just focus on the boy in the dress then. That'll be easy. Mm. Okay, okay. You two can have your little spat another time. Ahem. This year's campus festival is already a big success. Though we have many esteemed individuals here, such as the Duke and the Mayor, we can't afford to be intimidated. So just remember our number one rule, and you'll be fine. If you're gonna puke, do it off stage. We've done a good job of keeping the festival lively so far. Now let's close it out with a real bang. Without further ado, the Soon Council proudly presents Magical of the White Magnolia. Enjoy the show. In the year 1100 of the Septian calendar, 100 years ago, Liberal was still a land of nobles and aristocrats. But commoners too held some power, and they were prodigious traders that grew more influential with each passing year. During this period, there was much friction between the classes, and the nobles and commoners clashed often. As time went on, these clashes intensified. The intersection of the royal family and the church failed to end their squabbling. The stage was set for a final conflict. A year had passed since illness stole the king from his people. Our tale begins on an early spring evening in the rooftop garden of Grand Cell Castle. The street lights shine on everyone, each bright with their own happiness. And in spite of that... Ah, here you are, princess. Please, don't you think you should be going to your bed soon, your royal highness? Staying up so it can surely do you no good. It's alright, if I should fall ill. If that happened, then perhaps I could avoid becoming the last ember and this dying flame we call La Burl. Please do not say such things. Your Highness, you are the most exalted individual in La Burl. If you were to take a husband, you could take control of the kingdom. I will not marry. Despite my father's wishes, I shall not consent to it. But why, Your Highness? You have two fine men as suitors, after all. 
One is Sir Julius of the Chivalric Order of the Imperial Guards and the eldest son of a duke. And Sir Oscar, commoner though he may be, he has been recognized often in his battles against the Empire. Ah, both such fine men! No one knows better than I the quality of their characters. Oh, Oscar, Julius, how am I to choose between you? Oh my! Isn't that Joshua playing the role of the princess? <laughs> I suppose that Jill has put a great deal of thought into this reverse casting business. Indeed, ma'am. He plays his role well, but the two maids leave much to be desired. Do you remember, Oscar, how we spent our boyhood days in this alley, running about and pretending our sticks were swords? I could never forget, Julius. In those days, it was all so simple, with you and with Cecilia alike. I treasure that time greatly. <laughs> I recall how stunned I was. I would always conspire to play with her in secret, only to discover another had been doing the same. <laughs> She was as lovely as the sight of the falling petals in spring. Indeed, fair Cecilia was like unto our very own sun. But her light would dim with each day that passed. The nobles and the commoners. The fury of that conflict could never have been avoided. The princess's grief is easily understandable. Cruel fate mocks us so. For it is our very existence that has brought her such sorrow. Oh, wow, they're so cool. I hate to say it, but the guy kind of looks cuter than the girls. <laughs> Hush now and watch the show. Know this, Julius. The commoner's impudence can be tolerated no longer. If they should forget their place and no longer view us as their superiors, the borough's power structure would surely fall into ruin. If I may, Father, it has been roughly ten years since the Eastern Republic was founded. Perhaps the eventual seizing of power by the common people is inevitable in any state. Speak not of such repulsive events. What is freedom? What is equality? What is anything if commoners and nobles alike should cast all tradition aside? Better we should fall to our knees before the Empire's military and concede to their will. Father! Now that's a damn fine duke up there. You let the commoners get all high and mighty, and your whole society collapses. Your grace, perhaps it would be best to keep our voices down? Oscar, I'm expecting great things from you. If you can get the royal family on our side, we will have a great advantage over the nobles. And the advantage would allow us to seize power. But, Chairman, I cannot consent to this. I could never use Cecilia for political gain. Haha, <laughs> always putting others before yourself, I see. Even though you now have the chance to become king, albeit only on paper. If you would refuse, it will lead only to a bloody uprising and subsequent revolution. The royal family, and surely the nobles as well, would disappear into the shadows of history. Chairman! Impressive. They've really done their research. I had severe doubts about this ever since I first heard about the reverse role gimmick. <laughs> the students have all put a great deal of work into this, it seems. The young bracers have no small hand in this either. I do not wish bloodshed on anyone, revolution or not. I cannot simply allow Julius and Cecilia to die. As for myself, I know not what I should do. Ugh. Ugh it's no good. I'm gonna be sick. Are you alright? You must have had quite a bit more than you can handle. It may be spring, but you'll surely catch your death if you sleep out here. Uh, thank you, good sir knight. It has nothing to do with being a knight, but rather simple concern. I would have to be quite the young fool not to see what I must do. You've got that right. What? Uh, 
My arm! <laughs> Just a touch of anesthetic on the blade. Now, if you'll be so kind as to sit still. Curse you, assassin! Who sent you? Just a noble who wants you out of the picture. He wanted it badly enough to pay me up front, and pretty well at that. All you need to do is die. Ha, uh, I get it. Not bad. Not bad at all. So up next we should have... Whoops. Almost got so wrapped up that I forgot about my work. Long has it been since you have entered my sight, my fair princess. Yes, Julius. It truly has. I cannot help but notice that Oscar is not with you today. Back when my father yet breathed, the both of you were oft spoken of by the maids of the court. As you well know, your highness, the kingdom is in midst of a crisis most dire. And as such, he and I may never be as close as once we were. I confess, I come to you today to ask a favor. What favor would that be? That you would allow he and I, head of the Chilveric Order of the High Guard and a young general, to engage in a duel of honor. And that the victor shall be granted the great honor of becoming your husband. <laughs> Quite dramatic indeed. Caught up in the conflict between noble and commoner, these two close friends have finally decided on a duel. The princess now realizes their determination and keeps silent. And on the day of the duel, two knights step into the grand arena of the royal city. Many have come to witness it, commoner, noble, and all social caste in between. But conspicuously absent from the proceedings is the one over whom they fight, Princess Cecilia herself. My friend, I fear that this was inevitable. Perhaps fate always intended for us to meet in so base a fashion. Speak, that we may both be unburdened. If nothing else, for our beloved princess. We would cleave a path through fate with our own hands. But at this moment, my words and her smile seem lost. Has fear clutched your heart, Oscar? Perhaps. But what is this passion that pierces me to the quick. As I see you with blade drawn, I feel as though I've been waiting for this moment. Before this storm by the name of revolution should claim us both, we shall let fate decide our outcome. Yes, and may the goddess above see our spirits as they truly are. Come then, let it be done. Unguard! Impressive, Julius. And I should say the same of you. But still, you seem to hesitate. What troubles you, Oscar? Is this the extent of your skill? Perhaps the tales of your acts of valor against the Empire were grossly overstated. Yeah. Well done, Julius. Magnificent swordsmanship. Oscar, your arm! I've had worse. Tis but a scratch. Neither of our blades connected with flesh. Not even a glancing blow. Your wound was struck prior. This is a tactic most low, Duke Radmont. Was this your intention from the start? <laughs> I'll thank you to cease slandering my good name. Are you implying that I instigated this? Father, is it true? Did you... It's all right, Julius. My own inexperience has brought this about. Besides, I've received far worse on the field of battle. I will put everything I have behind my next strike. I intend... I intend to kill you. Oscar. Very well. I will wager it all on my next strike as well. For the fair princess, and the future of the very kingdom. He who lives, when all is said and done 
will inherit the responsibility for all. And he who dies will watch over it all from the realm of the spirits. Such is also the pride of a knight. <laughs> I suppose it is. Yeah! No! Oh. Cecilia? What? Princess! Cecilia, why? Were you not in attendance? Oh, Oscar? Julius? I did not wish to observe a duel between the two of you. I felt I had to find a way to put a stop to this fight. Praise Adios that I arrived in time. Cecilia, Princess, hear me all in attendance. Dismiss me and set aside your differences, please. Are we not all of Oberl? And do we not all love this land? There is so little that separates us from one another. If you would but take your foe's hand, surely we could find a peaceful resolution. Your Royal Highness, you need say no more. My vision fades. But what of you two? Will you not do as I ask? Your will be done, my princess. At your side. Strange, everything is floating. When I was young, I would sneak out of the castle, down to the alley. Oscar, Julius, you both always had smiles for me. I love your smiles. So, please, don't ever stop. Princess? No, no, this cannot be. Princess! I'll do anything. Please, no! Cecilia, you... Our poor princess. I just don't understand why she'd do such a thing. A princess gave her life that we might stop this unending dispute. Compared to that sacrifice, what a trifle is the pride of a nobleman. Had we not been fighting, it would never have come to this. Only now, when it is too late, do I see our folly. Is this the fate of all men? with their spirits still shackled to their flesh. Adios, great goddess of the skies, we now know of your great resentment. There is much that you do not yet understand, it seems. I granted you flesh to be your vessel, but your spirits still know more of freedom and nobility. Such contempt for it lies only within you, yourselves. S so beautiful. A more beautiful voice I have never heard. It's amazing. Adios herself has graced us with her presence. The goddess. Incredible. Hear me, young knights. I have observed your contest. You are both courageous and strong, yet something vital within you is broken. It is as you say. Our own immaturity is what invited this fate upon us. Chairman, has your hate for the nobles and the monarchy blinded you to the fact that we are all but men? I am ashamed. Duke, you know your sins better than anyone else could. And you, all the rest of you, who have simply watched these events unfold, there is something fundamental within you that is lost as well. Strike your hand upon your breast and think well upon this. <laughs> and it now seems that you have each remembered your hearts. As such, perhaps hope yet remains for Liberal. So long as you never forget the lessons learned this day. Oh, she has vanished. Mm -hmm. Oh, where am I? Princess! Cecilia! Oh my! Julius! Oscar! Have you both been called up to heaven as well? It's... it's a genuine miracle! Princess! Oh, praise Adios! What? Why are the two of you here? And the Duke! And the Chairman! 
So then, I'm not dead? Almighty Idios! Idios has given the pearl back its beloved! Praise her for her benevolence! Oscar! Julius! Um, what happened? Nothing that you need to concern yourself over, Cecilia. The conflict is at an end. I believe that everything will be alright. You're being naive, Oscar. We still have a duel to finish, do we not? Julius! Now, you still intend to fight? On the contrary, this match is concluded. And besides, this fool managed to get hit on his sword arm. But it would not do for a duel such as this to not have a clear victor. Thus it stands to reason that the man who fought with a significant handicap, yet emerged undefeated, should be regarded as the victor. Wait, Julius! Don't misunderstand me, Oscar. I have not given up on the princess. Once you are healed, our duel will continue, but with blades of wood, just as when we were boys. I see. <laughs> Very well then, I accept your challenge. Have neither of you any regard for my own wishes? You are mistaken. You, my lady, shall judge today's match, and I think it only fair for the victor to be granted a kiss. Surely everyone waits with bated breath for it. Very well. Ooh, don't they look marvelous together? Almighty Adios, look well upon this. And may this fine day extend unto eternity. Eternal peace to Liberal. Eternal glory to Liberal. <laughs> Quite the grand finale, but no matter. And so the curtain fell on the magical of the White Magnolia to grand fanfare and acclaim. And with its conclusion, an announcement went out that the campus festival had reached its end. The crowd began to disperse and leave the campus, each person wearing a look of contentment. Ah, brilliant. Just brilliant. That was one fine play, if the director is allowed to say so. At first I thought people would make fun of us with the role switch like that. I'm so glad that they took it seriously. Agreed. The costumes worked out pretty well. I wouldn't want to have to wear mine again, though. Corsets are like some form of torture. <laughs> no kidding. Well, it was all for a good cause. I just wait till you see how many pictures the photography club took. The ones of you ought to be particularly popular. Ugh, give it a rest. The ones of Estelle and Chloe won't exactly drive people away either. The guys always go nuts for the junior girls. We're really gonna rake in the mirror. I mean, uh, all the proceeds will go to a good cause. Chill. Hmm? Estelle, what's wrong? Huh? What? Where? What are you talking about? Nothing important, really. You've been spacing out ever since the play finished. Are you okay? Well, that fight scene was pretty hard work, and it's no surprise that you're tired. Do you feel sick? We can take you to the nurse's office. I'm fine, really. I deal with fatigue every day as a bracer. I'm just trying to get my head back in order is all. Oh, Estelle, you don't mean... No, nothing like that at all. I, I promise, I'm perfectly alright. <laughs> I trust we're not interrupting. Miss Chloe! Oscar was so cool! I want to be that cool when I grow up. <laughs> Thank you. You were really great too, Miss Estelle. Ah, uh, Sir Julius. <laughs> hey now, Mary. And Joshua was so cute. Yeah, I couldn't stop looking. Um, <laughs> Thank you. It was great fun for us all. A play about love and friendship, buffeted by the winds of a tumultuous era. It was so moving. The fight scene was intense, and though one could only expect it to end in tragedy, it had such a heartwarming conclusion. I thought it was splendid. Well, with praise like that, I'd have to say it was worth the effort. Oh yeah, Hans. Oh right, almost forgot. Huh? What's up? 
it's nothing bad, don't worry. I'll be right back, so just keep doing what you're doing. Um, okay. Those were Jill and Hans, no? Chloe, your friends are on the student council then? Yes, they were in charge of the production of the play. I see. I must thank them then. The children will have many fond memories of Ruan. Matron. I've made up my mind. I will tell them my decision when we return to Minoria. And then tomorrow, we'll take the first steps. Whoa, so soon? Hey, what you talking about? Clem, you shouldn't listen in on grown-ups talk. It's okay, Mary. But I think we should probably return to the inn. We can have dinner and continue our discussion over there. Uh, okay. Now then, Chloe. And you too, Asel and Joshua. I'm afraid we'll be taking our leave. Thank you for today. It was a lovely play. Oh, hold on a sec. Jill's coming back any moment, and she'll probably want to say goodbye before you go. Pardon me. Oh, Dean Collins. It's a pleasure to see you again, Matron Theresa. I must apologize for not coming by earlier to thank you for taking the time to visit. You needn't thank me. The festival was magnificent. I'm grateful for the invitation. Yes, the students were magnificent, weren't they? Chloe told me of your current situation. Truly dreadful. I was trying to think of a way that we could help. I... Jill. Yes, sir. Please, take this. Jill handed Matron Theresa a bulky envelope, sealed with the Royal Academy's crest. What's this? We took up a collection for you. It's one million Mira. Please use it to help rebuild the orphanage. W one million Mira? That's impressive. But how? Well, we have the Duke as well as the Mayor of Bose, so there are some celebrities here. Thanks to them, we were able to collect far more than we would have otherwise. Dean, no, I couldn't. I can't accept this. I don't see why not. The festival collects donations for charity every year. People donated specifically to help rebuild the orphanage. But I, it's too much. Please accept it, Matron. But Chloe, I realize that you're overwhelmed, but think about it. With that much Mira, the rebuilding could start and you wouldn't need to go to Grand Cell. You wouldn't have to give up your herb garden. She speaks the truth. Joseph would want you to accept this for the children. You needn't focus on the amount, just what can be done with it. You're right. I... I don't know how to show my appreciation. Thank you. Thank you all so very much. That's awesome. Yes, that should settle that. Hey, what's this thing about going to Grand Cell? Did something happen? It's okay. There's no need to worry. You've all been through so much. It's really not that big a deal. But why are you crying, Matron? Don't be silly, Clem. Those are happy tears. After the Matron and the children left to return to Minoria, Estelle and Joshua joined the other students in cleaning up after the festival. By the time everything was done, the day had given away to evening. But we had everything set up for you to be able to stay. I mean, the festival just ended and everything. <laughs> Sorry, but we can't. Since we're still apprentices, we can't go too long without checking in at the guild. We'd like to give our report before the day's out, if we can. So you'll have to excuse us. Is that so? Oh well, I guess I'm on my own tonight. It sure is going to be lonely and bad without you. What? Hans, would you please give the tasteless jokes a rest? Estelle, don't listen to him. Oh, <laughs> a joke. It's never boring with you guys. I'll give you that much. I hope you'll get the chance to come see us again. And stay for a couple of days. And nights. Uh, sure, we will. Thank you. We'll stop in again soon. <laughs> well, let's get going. We'll lose the daylight if we don't hurry. So you're headed to Minoria, Chloe? Yes. There's a lot I want to talk to the matron about. 
She said it would be alright for me to stay over at the inn with her and the kids tonight. I hate that you won't be here at the festival. Oh well, what can you do? I hope you have a good time. Oh yeah, how about the matron and the kids? Isn't it kind of risky for them to be carrying around that much money? Oh, don't worry about that. One of the other bracers escorted the whole lot of them back to the village. Her name's Karna. Apparently, the dean made a special request. He never misses a beat. Well, stay healthy, you guys. Here's hoping you guys do great with your bracer studies. Yep, you can count on it. Best of luck to the both of you as well. Hmm. We only had a few days at the academy, but it was great fun. Well, other than classes anyway. What are you talking about, Estelle? Normally students spend most of their time attending classes. The school festival might have been fun, but it was just a special event. Yeah, you're right. And being a student is tougher than I thought. <laughs> hmm? What's wrong? Nothing. It's just that I can't send seat nearby. I wonder where he went. Maybe he's just looking for dinner. Yes, that may be it. I'm sorry, I'm just being silly. Please allow me to come with you as far as the coastal road. Sure, it'll be fun. Let's see, that's the academy, right? Okay. You kinda turned me around there for a second. Oh man. Let's just uh let's just save. <laughs> oh boy. Magical of the White Magnolia. Really takes it out of you. Because I shortcutted last time and um and the fact that I knew that uh, the play takes forever. Like I said, 30 minutes of cutscene. 35 minutes or something like that, I don't know. Um it takes so long that uh that we're actually a little behind from where my last playthrough was. Just a little bit. Uh like because I didn't realize how long that cutscene was gonna take the first time. My uh my last video with uh, the play ended up being like an hour and 30 minutes because I screwed up. <laughs> well, I guess this is goodbye. Yes. Thank you so much for the last few days. No problem. It's been fun. Take care and say hi to the matron Thresh and the kids for us. Don't worry. I will. Hey, you three. Huh? You're from Minoria, aren't you? You guys are... <sighs> Bracers, right? We've got big trouble. What kind of big trouble? <sighs> Hang on a sec. I need to catch my breath. <sighs> Phew. Someone attacked Matron Theresa and the kids here in Minoria. Whoa, say what now? No. Hey, are you alright? Keep your cool. This is no time to go fainting on us. I I'm sorry. Please, tell us whatever you can. O okay. They were apparently assaulted by some strange group on the way back from the campus festival. The kids are okay, but Matron Theresa and the Bracer Lady got knocked out. You mean Karna? No way! They must have been highly trained. I would have contacted the guild, but communications are down at the inn. I didn't have much choice other than to run all the way here. I see. Well, thank you for your help. If you can manage it, would you go on to Ruan for us? We've got to hurry to Minoria. Okay, we will do. Let's get going. Okay. Alright. Save. So if I'm not mistaken, oh man, this one's mean. It's like... They throw a crisis on your plate, and you would think like, "Oh God, I gotta, I gotta get to Minoria right away." Well, guess what? If you do, well, that settles it. I'm going to have to give you this book. You missed this freaking chapter of Carnelia. This is so mean. It's so mean. Go against all your instincts. Don't help out those attacked orphans and Matron Theresa. Instead, sidetrack and go have adventures. Actually, let me save right here. Again, now that we have the book. Give me one minute. I'm gonna go check something. Alright, let's go. That was me checking on O'Neill's dialogue. I wanted to see if he said anything interesting. He didn't. But I did pick up something off the bracer board, which is a extermination request for this monster. Perfectly timed. 
I really don't want to fight you guys. Can I hit multiple with a flicker? Like this. Alright, Estelle. Hurricane these fools. Let's see what their resistances are. Oh, they don't like arts, huh? Oh, too bad for you. Ah, they moved out of it. What bastards. Alright, monster taken care of. Don't think I have to worry about reporting that one in. I can do that later. I didn't bother to stop to talk to Jean, though. It's kind of selfish of me, right? Just be like, uh, Oh yeah, hey, what's up, Sean? I know, uh, we, we just heard about the orphans being attacked, but what's up? Just came to hang out. That Carnelia chapter's so mean! It's like, God, no wonder no one ever gets to finish, uh, the book series in this, in these games. Let's see, we're like, what, one screen away from Minoria? If I can, I'd like to stop in at the, uh, the general goods store. I didn't check to see if there's a new issue of the liberal news. Ooh, that'd be nice, right? But I imagine that's not going to happen. I would think that they're not going to put a new one out until Niall writes his, uh, like, report on the, uh, the play. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, well. All right, let's learn about these beaten up orphans. Whoops. Here we go. Oh! Miss Chloe! Everyone! Wah! It was so scary! Thank goodness you're all safe! Pardon me, but what about the others? How's Major and Theresa? Don't worry, they're not hurt. They haven't woken up though, which has me a little worried. If I may then, I'd like to see them. No doubt about it. Someone used sleeping powder. Sleeping powder? Yes, there's still a faint hint of it in the air. It's probably the kind without side effects, so there's no real need for concern. Hmm. Hey, Clem, can you tell us what happened? I'll tell you. We were walking along the coast road with the bracer lady, and these strange guys in mass showed up out of nowhere. The racer lady fought with them for a while, but they surrounded her. She fought them to save us and Matron Theresa. That's why. There, there. It must have been so scary. They, they took an envelope from the matron. I wanted really bad to get it back. Mr. Joshua, I couldn't help her. Don't think that way, Clem. I know that Matron Theresa would just be happy that all of you were safe. That's why you mustn't blame yourself. But I... I... I don't believe this! Who would do such a thing? Whoever it is must certainly be skilled at hiding his or her presence. After all, the bracer wasn't alerted and Matron Theresa is unconscious. Chloe! I get the feeling that this was very deliberate. I'd say that the criminals were probably targeting the donations Matron Theresa had on her. If we find the money, we'll find the culprit. Yes, you're probably right. You seem a little calmer than earlier. Yes, in order to help the matron and the kids, I must compose myself. Regardless, we must find who did this as soon as possible. She's right, you know. Ah! Uh, Agate! I heard what was going on at the guild. Looks like you've gotten wrapped up in one hell of a mess. Hey, don't make light of the situation. Karna got hurt too. I know that, so quit your yapping. Karna's no amateur either. It takes someone pretty skilled to beat her. How about you give me a quick rundown of what's been going on here? Okay. Joshua and Asil told Agate the whole story about the donations for the orphanage. Huh, alright then. There's definitely something weird going on. Weird how? Well, here's the thing. You know that raven gang that was hanging out at the warehouse? They're all gone now. Warehouse is empty. Then, 
They must be the ones who assaulted Major Theresa. I'm not so sure about that. I really doubt they'd have what it takes to get the upper hand on Karna. Yeah, that's true. They talk a big game, but I don't think they could back it up. Yeah, give them a single hard look and they shut right up. However, today they're suddenly nowhere to be found. Couple that with today's little incident, and what do you get? Like I said, something weird is going on. Even if they're not directly responsible for the fire, I do feel like they're involved somehow. Yeah, but this ain't the time to go checking that out. Come on, Greenhorns, let's go. What are you talking about? Where are we going? You saw in the head or something? Obviously, we're going to go to the seaside path where the crime happened. How those idiots did it doesn't matter right now. We've got to focus on finding some clues as to where they are. Ah, uh, true. Understood. We'll help. Wow, how did it get to be so late? Ugh, this is no good. How are we supposed to search in the dark? Hey, what was that sound? Oh, Sieg, where have you been? What the hell? That's Sieg. He's Chloe's Deer Falcon companion. Oh, you. As long as he's friendly. Scree! Scree, scree! Understood. Thank you, Seek. Scree! Now I've seen everything. So, Missy, what did your friend there tell you? The whereabouts of the ruffians who assaulted Theresa, evidently. It seems that he saw the attack. <laughs> That's a good one. Nice going, Seek. Yes, most impressive. Scree! No, wait one damn minute. You mean to tell me that you actually believe that little bull? We've seen him communicate several times. Hey, if you don't believe us, you don't have to come along. Come on, guys. Alright. Scree! Um, wait up, you punks! Does seem like it's homing in on something, but... Come on, are we really following that thing? If this is your idea of a joke, it's not funny. It's not a joke. The matron and the children are like family to me. Hmm, <laughs> fine then. Thought you were yanking my chain, but I guess I'll tag along. Jeez, why don't you say what you really think? All that aside, we need to get going after Sieg. Sure, after we save. Alright, where did he go? Well, I know exactly where he went. Isn't that the way to the lighthouse? Hmm, let's go and check it out. Sure thing. What is going on here? Who attacked Matron Theresa? Karna. I think we're about to find out. And was it the Ravens? <laughs> and now this thing's a dungeon. Sort of. Nah, it's not really. We know it's not that big. Just as I thought. The Varian Lighthouse. It belongs to the city of Ruan. If I remember right, there's a man who lives here all alone. This appears to be the place. I'm almost positive that the ones who attacked Matron Theresa and the children are here in this building. Which means that there's a high chance the perpetrators have taken over the lighthouse. And from the looks of it, that seems to be the only entrance. I guess all there is left to do is to check it out for ourselves. Yes. Now hold on a minute, girl. I want to see the truth with my own eyes. What the hell are you talking about? I want to know why someone would do such a horrible thing like that. So please, take me with you. I can see where you're coming from, but... Oh, come on! Don't act all stingy now! The only reason we knew about this place to begin with was because of Chloe. And I can guarantee she can handle herself. So at least, you don't have to worry about her getting in the way. So, Joshua... Fine, have your way. 
but I hope you remember that these guys are the ones who put Karna out of commission. Make sure you don't let your guard down. I'll keep that in mind. Well, I guess it's decided then. Alright, let's hurry and check the place out. Hey, it's the Ravens. These guys again. Aren't they the ones from before? I swear, if I wasn't looking at them with my own eyes right now, I'd never believe it. Hey, what the hell are you all doing here? The Raven Gang members' eyes are blank and emotionless. Uh, hey! Agit, look out! Where are they getting this strength from? Dean, you son of a... This is just perfect. Now, I don't know what kind of drugs you're smoking, but if I have to beat some sense back into you, I will. Oh, I probably should have outfitted Agate. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, whatever, it's not like it's going to be a challenge to me. Probably should attack that guy first. Ah, oh, Dean survived. And Agate's not within range. But Joshua is... Rip. I should put, uh... Agate's strongest weapon on. I can't believe it! These guys are a hundred times stronger than when we dealt with them at the warehouse! They appear to be acting rather strange. I wonder what's going on. Hmm. It looks like they're being controlled by someone. C controlled yeah, I agree. I'd say it's some sort of special hypnotic induction using a combination of drugs and suggestion. This allows the person controlling them to draw out their maximum physical potential. Can someone really do that? Of course. But they need to be pretty skilled to even attempt such a thing. I can only think of one group that could pull off something like this. You have an idea who might be responsible? Yeah, possibly. There's no time to talk about it now. Let's head upstairs. The real perpetrator should be up there. Alright, let's go. Alright, so Agate might have an idea as to who's responsible for this. I think I might have an idea. Here they come again. Looks like we don't have any choice but to put them down the hard way. Here we go. Whack. Oh, I didn't put Agate's thing on. Damn it. <laughs> Why am I so forgetful? I missed a... Uh... Which one is that? Rice? Take this flicker. Boom. And we're done here. Not forgetting this time. Berserker. There we go. Don't care about the accessories. I'm really sorry about this. I really don't want to fight with anyone being controlled, but... This isn't the time to be holding back. We don't need to kill them. Just knock them out. Ah, evil eye. Trusty. Useful. I think this is the top, right? Well, it's not, but we're going to be at the top now. Hey, you hear that? <laughs> A job well done. Now we'll be able to blame this mess on those punks. And everything will work out perfectly. So I take it that you're satisfied with our work? Yes, you've handled things nicely. But just to make sure, you haven't left any incriminating evidence, right? <laughs> you've got nothing to worry about there. And even when those fools regain their senses, they won't remember a thing. The White House Keeper shouldn't wake up until morning either. I'm relieved to hear that. With this, the matron of that orphanage should give up on her dreams of rebuilding it. And the series of incidents along with this arson 
will end up looking like the work of those lowlifes. We can get two birds with one stone. It's perfect. We're glad to see that our clients are happy with our work. However, if you don't mind me asking, what's the benefit in destroying that orphanage? That's the one thing I've been having a hard time understanding. <laughs> Please. If you really want to know so bad, I'll let you in on the secret. The mayor intends to transform that entire area into a series of very, very upscale vacation homes. Interesting. A scenic seaside area not far from Ruan City. What more favorable geographic conditions could there be than that for a vacation home? We'll build lavish estates there and then sell them off to the highest bidders. That's been the mayor's plan all along. Now that's a ritzy plan if I've ever heard one. But I still don't get why it was necessary to burn the orphanage to the ground. <laughs> Think about it. Imagine trying to sell a luxury estate to someone with a ramshackle place like that marring the view. Not to mention all the little brats running around close by and making a ruckus. I see. Something like that would definitely cut their value in half. But instead of going to an extreme like that, why not just buy up the place? Huh! You didn't really think that stubborn woman would sell off the land left to her by her late husband, did you? And if we were to haul away the burned out remains while they were away and build something in its place, there's not much they could do, could they? <laughs> and since they have no money to rebuild the place, they'll have no choice but to accept their fate. That was your reasoning? Uh, how long have you been standing there? For something like that? You hurt Matron Theresa and the children and burned their memories to ashes. You deprived those children of their smiles? For that? How did you know we were here? But before that, what are those lowlifes doing downstairs? Too bad for you. They're taking a long nap. And to think that the mayor was behind it all. Plus some faces we've seen before seem to be involved too. So, you know who we are, do you? We have been briefly acquainted with that redhead bracer before. Ha! <laughs> so running off like dogs with your tails between your legs and sicking some monsters on me means we're acquainted, huh? But now I find I got you where I want you. K kill them! Kill them all! Now that they've seen my face, I can't let them walk out of here alive! It's unfortunate that you've fallen this far, Gilbert. Well, since this is a request from our client, I guess we'll have to comply. Let's see what you've got, Bracers. That's exactly what I was thinking. Just because you're hired help, don't think that you're any less responsible. I think it's time to make you taste the power of the heavy blade. Alright, so these are the dudes we saw over at, uh... Valeria Lakeshore talking to the Sky Bandits. And apparently, Agate is uh, familiar with them. And he said sicken some beasts on him. These dudes are probably responsible for that attack that happened at Crone Pass. Shadow weaving, huh? It's a very basic version of it. This can't be! Gilbert, steward of the mayor, and you boys in black. In accordance with the laws of the Bracer Guild, you are hereby placed under arrest. Give it up, and surrender. <sighs> You're pretty tough, I'll give you that. Going toe to toe with you hasn't disappointed me at all. Ugh, the lieutenant's going to be mad. He warned us about this. We shouldn't have been as careless as we were. The lieutenant? Do you mean that guy wearing the red mask? was negotiating with the Sky Bandits. I'm surprised you know about that. Looks like you dogs from the guild are better at sniffing things out than we thought. Your insults are pretty funny considering we just gave you a serious beatdown. Now hurry up and throw down your weapons and surrender. Sorry, but we can't do that. What? What do you think you're doing? Don't move. Come any closer and this guy's brains are going to be splattered all over the place. What is the meaning of this? What do you intend to do by threatening your employer? You're wrong about that. You're not our employer. The mayor is. 
But whether it was you or the mayor here, the outcome would have been the same. We've only cooperated with you because we share a mutual interest. And we couldn't care less whether you live or die. P please Don't shoot! Don't shoot me! Cut the tears and the crap! Don't think you can get away by trying to fool us with a show like that! Ugh! My leg! Ugh! My leg! G Gilbert! <clears throat> Looks like they were serious about what they said. If this isn't enough of a show for you, then how about we blow the brains out of the White House Keeper? He has nothing to do with this! If his life means anything to you, then I suggest you back up. Let's see, like over by the stairs. Seems we don't have much of a choice. <laughs> that's right. Do what you're told like the dogs you are. And it looks like this is where we bid you farewell. Wait! Don't think you're getting away this time. A rope? These guys were seriously prepared for anything. I'm leaving you to take care of that idiot steward and the rest. What? I'm going after these guys. The rest of you report to Jean and ask him for further instructions. Uh, uh I can't remember whether or not this choice matters. I think it kind of might. Let me just check to make sure. Yeah, apparently it doesn't matter. D did you just see that? Shouldn't we go after those guys too? No. Did you just hear what Agate said? We can't forget about Gilbert and those guys from the Raven Gang. That's right. And though I think Gilbert got what was coming to him, he is still hurt. Oh, alright. I hate to say this, but I guess we'll have to lead the rest up to Agate. Thus, in the end, Estelle and the others were able to take back the stolen money without incident. By the time the Mayor Stewart and the group of delinquents were safely locked up, in the Minoria windmill shed, morning had already broken. Alright, that's actually going to do it for now. When we pick up next time, we'll continue with this scene, and uh, we'll see what happens now that we know that Mayor Dalmore is the mastermind behind the orphanage burning down. I think we have an arrest to go make. See you guys in the next one.